One of the questions that I get asked either directly or indirectly from a lot of people on my YouTube channel is, how did I grow my shop to where it is? In other words, what they're asking is, how did I acquire all the tools that I have in my shop? And I'm gonna take you along a journey in a series of videos going through the next couple months, really. I'm probably releasing about one video a week. Um, and I'm gonna go through all the tools and I'm gonna tell you how I got them. So the first thing that I plan to do is to tell you the story of how I got the tool. You know, a shop just isn't a collection of money piled into a room, it's a collection of stories of how a person got the tool. And for me, I have a lot of very unique stories to tell and some pretty funny ones, interesting ones, um, maybe entertaining ones for you that will tell you how I got a lot of these tools in my shop. The second thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm going to give you a tool review. And I'm gonna let you know whether or not I like this tool. It will explain the, the function of the tool and you'll get to see it work. And then thirdly, we'll end each video with just a brief conclusion of whether or not you should be thinking about purchasing this tool or having this tool in your shop. So look at these pictures that I wanna show you of the shop that I've currently built at my home here in Southern Indiana. And this video is a video of when we very first moved onto this property and I had this skeleton of a barn and I had a vision of turning this into my next shop. It's actually the primary reason that we moved to where we did in Southern Indiana. And so now if you look around me, you'll see that I got all kinds of tools surrounding me and I didn't get here by accident. And so hopefully you'll enjoy this series. This is the first video of that. And I'm gonna start with something very, very simple that I wanna show you that helped to inspire all of this. It's this tool right here, the Stanley Block Plane. For many years of my life, I've worked in several different wood shops, and it's one of the things that's helped me to gain a lot of the skills that I've had. You know, you can learn a lot from YouTube, and certainly I have. I, I don't think I've ever fixed a car um, where I haven't went to a YouTube channel to figure out how to do whatever it is that I had to do. But having said that, nothing would replace being a mechanic in a shop. Nothing would replace learning your skills in a professional shop where you're doing it day in and day out. And so that's where I learned most of my stuff. However, there did come a time when I realized that I love woodworking so much that it wasn't enough for me to work a 40 hour week. I also wanted to have a shop in my home. And so my shop has evolved a lot over the years. I've, I've had a couple two car garage shops. I had a shop on the third floor level of a church building. And I have my shop here at home in Southern Indiana, which is basically equivalent to about a four or five car garage. Well, when I began acquiring tools for my shop, I wanted something simple. <laughs> I wanted something that I could afford. And so the first thing that I did is I went into, uh, at that time I was actually living up in Minnesota. I was raised in a town called Burnsville and we moved around to different places from Prior Lake to Shakopee um, to Belle Plaine. If you, most people have never heard of Belle Plaine. It's grown some over the years, um, but all south of the cities kind of areas. And I went to my local Rockler store um, and you know, no offense, there's a lot of older people that work there and I'm, and I'm thankful for that, guys that have wisdom and experience um, that can sort of help teach us younger guys different things and guide us. Um, but I went in and I said, I, I want a woodworking tool. <laughs> of course, the tools that I was used to working in in big shops were like big huge joiners, you know, mostly Delta Unisaws or Powermatics. Um, you know, big planers, big 24 inch planers and stuff like this. But for my personal shop, I just wanted something that I could sort of tinker around with. And the, the guy at the, at the woodworking shop at the Rockler said, and by the way, Rockler doesn't pay me, but that's who I got it from. So I'm going to use the name. Um, but he said, how about a hand plane? And I thought, you know what? I'm not sure that I've ever used one of those in a professional shop. And he said, well, you really ought to try and learn how to get better with this kind of stuff. And it's a very useful tool if you've never used it. And so, you know, I was, uh, I'm trying to think, I think I was about 21 years old at the time, which I'm, I'm almost 40 now, uh, to put that in perspective. So, you know, if you think that I'm much younger than that, I, I thank you for the compliment. Um, but I am, I am getting to that midlife point of the life. And so maybe my shop is a midlife crisis. I don't know. <laughs> you can decide that. But I, I decided to get this hand plane, to make a long story short. And uh, 
I can tell you, it's been useful for so many things that I never thought that it would be. And so I acquired my first little tool in the shop um, just by some advice from someone at a local woodworking store. And you know, that's where a lot of people's woodworking journey starts. And so we rely a lot on the people that work in those stores uh, to give good advice and to, you know, sort of guide us along a path that helps us accomplish what we want to accomplish in our woodworking journey. So most of the uh, rocklers or woodcrafts or, or like-minded stores that I've been in, most of them in those stores, you know, if you go in and you say, I've got $500, they're not going to try to sell you on like a brand new saw stop table saw or something that could be three or $4,000. Um, most of the time they're working with you to get you into woodworking because that's what we want. We want people in the woodworking community. We want people in what is becoming a lost and dying art form. And we want people, really, what, what I would like to see is people go from hobbyists to being able to support themselves for a living in a woodworking career and really develop professional skills that can benefit for them entire life. And most importantly, that you would enjoy what you do and that you would find fulfillment in what you do. A lot of people I know get into woodworking uh, because their previous form of employment provided them absolutely no joy or satisfaction and no sense of accomplishment. And this little tool here helps the instant gratification mindset. And so having said that, I want to show you how it does that through just doing a brief tool review on this block plane. So here it is. The Stanley, this is a sweetheart, they call it. <laughs> Stanley sweetheart block plane. Never mind the dust on my workbench. By the way, never trust a YouTube woodworking video person's advice that doesn't have dust in their shop. Real shops have dust in them, okay? So in this video, I'm not gonna go a lot in depth as to naming all the mechanical parts in the plane and stuff like that. There are several great videos on YouTube that accomplish that. And surely if you've watched this video, if you watch my channel, I am sure that you've probably heard of Paul Sellers. And if you haven't heard of Paul Sellers, you might wanna go check him out because he is one of the masters of doing this uh, traditional handworking and things like that. And he has so many videos explaining how to sharpen planes, how to set them up and do all that kind of stuff. So I would highly recommend that you go check out his video. I don't know Paul personally or anything like that, never even talked to him or contacted him, but I've been richly blessed by his videos. And so hopefully he'll be blessed by knowing that uh, people like me and, and all of you out there watch, watch them. If you're looking for a good all around kind of utilitarian plane that you can carry around in your pocket from the construction site into the wood shop, then this would be the one for you. This kind of plane has been a staple in construction sites for years. A lot of the construction guys that I know carry something similar to this in their pocket, whether it's a smaller version or a bigger version or maybe a different angled version. You know, the, the angle is, is how this blade is set and the lower the angle, you know, generally the less snipe and stuff or the less grab that you're going to have in the wood when you're working with it. And that makes sense. You know, if a, the blade's a higher angle, it's going to want to dig in a little bit more. Whereas if it's, it's lower, it's going to kind of, you know, glide across easier, if you will. I'm, I'm trying to make it easy, common language for us to understand. What I like about this plane specifically over other ones is the ease of adjustment. And in most hand planes, uh, it's, they're all pretty similar. And so what it really comes down to is how well is it machined? You know, how do the screws function that are in here? And what's the ease of adjustment on it? That's a big deal because when you get on the job site or in the wood shop, you tend to find um, that adjustment is a big deal. You don't want to take off way more than necessary. And you also don't want to sit there all day going back and forth, you know, trying to clean up a spot, realizing that, you know, you just have to turn a little screw and then you're good to go. And this particular block plane, the Stanley Sweetheart plane, is very easy to adjust. Um, and so that was one of the things that I found that I really liked about it as I had it. It's also got an adjustment up front um, that allows you to sort of change the depth from the blade, um, which is a big deal when you're doing bigger or smaller shavings. You, you would want to adjust that uh, so that you can get it really fine tuned and so that it grabs the wood well and, and really shears it off nicely in there. Some of these videos are going to have more in-depth tool reviews and some are going to have less in-depth. 
and quite honestly this is going to be a less in-depth video. I just want to show you how it works real quick and then we'll conclude with a simple thought. One of these things that I use this tool for the most is a simple operation which is just breaking an edge on a piece of wood. In most shops the way you would do that is just taking a sander whether that be a block with this piece of sandpaper or you would take a uh, an orbital sander, a power sander, and you would just buzz over it real quick. In my years of cabinet building, <laughs> we never used one of these things. Um, you know, we just took the sander and zip, 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 and it would be all done. But let me tell you something. This does something the sander doesn't do, and that is make a perfectly clean edge all the way down without any dip on one side or the other. When you look at cabinet doors, so when you get home or if you're watching this at home, go look at the cabinet doors in your house and look in the inside edge and you will see the inside edges are probably all rolled over and that's because someone used a sander on them. So these are the sorts of things you begin to notice in really fine furniture that only a discerning eye sees and this block plane does a great job of just cleaning up that edge. And just like that, you have something that's paintable and that is perfect side to side. Well, I'm going to do a little bit more just to sort of exaggerate. And then we'll look at this edge. Look at that perfect edge on there. That's a thing of beauty. Well, let's take this a step further and see how quick we can make nice fat shavings on this little piece of pine. Now in today's world, there's many options available to the woodworker, and this is going to be my concluding thought for the video. You can start with something like this and learn how grain direction works in wood, and you can get a better understanding of how things work in terms of overall construction and building, or you can start with power tools. I don't necessarily think in today's day and age one is significantly better than the other. Well, one thing I can say that there is a great advantage to something like this when you actually learn how to work with the wood. Plus, you get to make sweet looking shavings like this. And gosh, I could have about an hour long video just on that last comment that I made about learning how to work wood. Well, I can't tell you how many times this little tool has saved me in the shop and helped me do a better job. If you're thinking about getting one of these, I would say, yeah, go ahead and do it and maybe you'll have a cool story of your own after you do. I love this little hand plane. You know what else I love? People that take an interest in my videos. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, which helps me get more views on YouTube, and hit the bell, which will inform you of the most recent notifications of my new videos that come out regularly. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you all later.